Thank you, Chris. That was great. I looking at that, I noticed the picture of Kennedy. If you look in that picture, so many of those people in that picture are no longer with us in that that photo. But thank you. Thank you for playing that. Um, so today we're concluding our series on the gifts of winter. And I hope that you've had the opportunity to follow the calendar and utilize all the things that this season offers us. You know, winter is a season of silence, of deep, quiet snows and sleeping creatures down in their nests and burrows. Winter is a time for us to embrace the silence. Now, Joel Goldsmith said, silence, the healing consciousness, is not an absence of sound, but a state of consciousness that enables us to refrain from mental reaction to what is seen or heard. I just love that. Isn't that wonderful? We refrain from the mental reaction. So we don't react. We just be. Now, Unity pioneer E.V. Ingram wrote, the silence is clearly taught in the scriptures and is one of the most vital aspects of prayer. Be still and know is a clear command to let the mind rest from its own activities and record knowledge that the infinite wants to reveal. I love that too, because it's in the silence where we have those intuitive moments, where we have that direct communication with spirit. Spending time in silence is a spiritual practice for all of us that choose to do it, but some adopt it as an actual vocation. And I'd like to share the insights from a monk that spent a year in solitary prayer. He wrote, what happens when one is silent for a long period? The outer noise goes first, and then the inner noise starts to evaporate. Soon, quiet reigns everywhere, it seems. Time slows to a, a crawl. Sound becomes a curiosity, natural sounds, especially like the flow of water or the rustle and sway of tall grass, become occasions for deeper listening and lead to the most profound inner calm. The great lesson I learned in the monastery was how to get in touch with the spiritual center of myself. Deep within each of us is a great well of health, abundance, knowledge, guidance. When we enter the silence and stay in that silence, we come into direct contact with that sacred well. In that place dwells our true and higher self. It is that part of us that exists and operates in a place where there is no time, no past, no future, only the present moment. It is the part of us that is connected to all consciousness. This spiritual center is active in us always. It will communicate with us if we are still enough to hear its gentle voice. One way to approach silence as a spiritual practice is remaining in a listening mode during our silent time. The still small voice within may not arise in form of words. It may come as an idea you have never thought of before or in the image of something or someone. Often the voice will not come to you during the silence, but afterward, and when you least expect it. It may arise in the middle of a conversation you are having with someone later in the day. It may appear as a satisfying conclusion to a personal event. It may emerge from something you are reading or listening to. One of the most powerful spiritual practices you can adopt is also the easiest one to do. And I love that sharing from his experience and his conclusions. And any of us that meditate have experienced that on, to some degree. So how do we put all of that into practice? That monk who prefers to stay anonymous suggests that we practice at least one hour of silence each day. Now, I know that may be a lot for some, but we can start with just five minutes a day and work up to it. 
Now he has several suggestions to help us to be able to stay in that hour of silence every day. He suggests that each schedule an hour at a particular time of day. So schedule, actually put it on your calendar. If it's scheduled, we're more than likely to adhere to it. He suggests that during that hour, turn off your phone, your TV, your radio, your computer, and all the other appliances and communication devices. He says, put down all your books and other reading material, light a candle to be a witness to your hour of silence. Sit quietly and rest or look carefully at a natural object or engage in work that does not require you to hear, see, or express words. <clears throat> he suggests gentle housekeeping, gardening, or going for a long walk in nature. For me, I find repetitive tasks work great as an active meditation. So walking in the woods or chopping wood or spinning on my spinning wheel all induced a meditative state for me. Um, and a state where I was actually in the silence. Believe it or not, I used to love ch chopping wood. Well, I should say splitting wood from my fireplace um, and my spinning wheel. I was amazed at how that repetitive task and the turning of the wheel would really put me in, immersed into the silence. He suggests that we listen to the silence all the time enjoying this hour long break from thinking reviewing, planning, or imagining, and staying in the present moment. If we get distracted, we can breathe deeply and mindfully and bring in the silence by expelling that mental noise. At the end of the hour of silence, he invites us to let our first word be an expression of gratitude or love. Then he says, put out the candle and go about your daily activities. So being in the silence surely feeds our soul. But on a physical level, silence is also good for our brains. We live in a loud and distracting world where silence is increasingly difficult to come by. And that may negatively affect our health. In fact, in, a two, in 2011, a World Health Organization report called Noise Pollution, a Modern Plague. They said that there is an overwhelming evidence that exposure to environmental noise has adverse effects on the health of the population. We're constantly filling our ears with music, TV, radio, podcasts, and of course, the noise that we create in our, in our own heads. Think about it. How many moments each day do we actually spend in total silence? The answer is probably very few. As our internal and external environments bec become louder and louder, more people are beginning to seek out silence. Whether you practice sitting quietly for 10 minutes every morning or heading off to a 10 day silent retreat, Silence is good for us. Science supports the fact that science is good for us. And author Karen Greco shares, her, shares four facts in her article, Why Silence is So Good for Your Brain. And she says the first is silence relieves stress, <laughs> stress and tension. Now we all know Florence Nightingale, the 19th century British nurse and social activist. Well, she once wrote, unnecessary noise is the most cruel absence of care that can be inflicted on sick or well. She said that needless sounds cause distress, it causes sleep loss and causes alarm for recovering patients. It turns out that noise pollution has been found to lead in high blood pressure and heart attacks, as well as impairing overall hearing and health. According to research, loud noises raise stress levels by activating the brain's amygdala and causing the release of the stress hormone cortisol. A 2004 paper by environmental psychologist, Dr. Craig Zimring, 
suggests that the rise, the higher the noise levels in a neonatal intensive care unit led to elevated blood press pressure and increased heart rates in those, in those baby sleeping patterns. Now, just as too much noise can cause stress and tension, research has also found that silence has the opposite effect. It releases tension in the brain and the body. A 2006 study published by the Journal of uh, Heart found that the, I'm sorry, I'm missing part of that. It was a, a heart journal found that um, based on changes in blood pressure and blood circulation in the brain, two minutes of silence is more relaxing than actually listening to relaxing music. So just think about that. Two minutes in the silence can bring our body levels back, bring them down, and is more relaxing than just listening to relaxing music. The second fact is that silence replenishes our mental resources. In our everyday lives, sensory input is being thrown at us from every angle. This constant demand of modern life puts a burden on our prefrontal cortex of the brain, which is involved in higher order thinking, decision-making and problem solving. So because of that, our ability to pay attention greatly decreases. We lose our ability to pay attention. We become distracted, mentally fatigued, and we may struggle to focus, solve problems and come up with new ideas. Sound familiar? <laughs> I know that when my brain is overwhelmed, there's no way that I can focus and get things done. I'm too distracted by the outside. But according to attention restoration theory, the brain can restore its cognitive resources when we're in environments with lower levels of sensory input. So that means when we're quiet, when we're in that silence, we can allow the brain to decompress. So the brain, the brain can let down its sensory guard. And by doing that, it replenishes. So we can actually restore our brains when we move into the silence. The third fact is that in the silence, we tap into the brain's default mode network. Now the default mode network of the brain is activated when we engage in what scientists refer to as self-generated cognition. And that means daydreaming, meditating, fantasizing about the future, or just letting our minds wander. When the brain is still and disengaged from external stimuli, we can tap into that inner stream of thoughts, emotions, memories, and ideas. This engages the default mode net network, and it helps us to make meaning out, out of our experiences. It helps us to empathize, empathize with other, others. It helps us to be more creative. It helps us to reflect on our own mental and emotional states. So that's that self-awareness portion. Now, in order to do this, we need to break away from the distractions that keep us remaining on the narrow surfaces of the mind. Silence is one way to get there. The default mode activity helps us think deeply and creatively. As Herman Melville once wrote, all profound things and emotions of things are preceded and attended by silence. Now the fourth fact is getting quiet can regenerate brain cells. So silence can literally regrow the brain. A 2013 study on mice published in the journal Brain 
structure and function involved comparing the effects of background noise, white noise and silence on rodents brains. Although the research is intended to use silence as a control in the study, they found that two hours of silence daily led to the development of new cells in the hippocampus, a key brain region associated with learning, memory, and emotion. Now, these findings suggest that silence could be therapeutic for conditions like depression and Alzheimer's, which are, dissociate, which are associated with decreased rates of neuron regeneration in that part of the brain. So we can see that silence can really change our brains. We need the silence. We need it physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Mother Teresa said, see the stars, the moon, and the sun, how they move in silence. We need silence to be able to touch our souls. Yeah, we need silence. We need silence so that we can go within and we can contact and commune with that part of us that is all existing, that part of us that is part of all that is, that part that touches God, the Christ within us. In his book, The Deepest Silence, um, John Roger Barry says, the eloquence of the deepest silence echoes from the eternal. To the mystic, silence is the ground, the core of reality. All else relates to and emanates from it. So everything, everything of importance emanates from that silence. He says the deeper elements in all religions point to the silence. It is God, it is Buddha, it is Allah. But to paraphrase Lao Tzu, to name it is to elude its essence. It can only be experienced. Let that sink in. It can only be experienced. And isn't that what we all want? Experience of that oneness, that isness, that is all things. The 15th century Muslim born saint Kabir humorously observed, I laugh when I hear the fish in the water is thirsty. This is a paradox. This paradox claims that we are forever surrounded by silence, yet all the while blocked to its existence. And that's the key to the dilemma in spirituality. How can we not experience that which always envelops and permeates us? How can we not experience that which is all, is always there, ever present? By just affirming its existence, we'll not reach that experiential realization. It's in the silence the spiritual practice of silence that provides us with the means to fine tune our faculties so that we can perceive that oneness, that essence, that spirit. By embracing a spiritual path, each of us wants to meet that silence firsthand. This is the journey of life, that inner vocation. It's returning to the source, that which we have glimpses of. But in this silence, we experience it for longer periods of time. We need to discover why we do not experience silence. What prevents us from going into the silence? The simplest answer is that we're used to noise. We're accustomed to it. We're addicted to the fuss, the commotion, the mental chattering, the outer stimulation. It occupies our minds from the moment we get up in the, moment, in the morning until we go to bed. When you're clattering away on a keyboard for 16 hours a day, the silence is elusive. 
It's far away. So we need to be in touch with that which keeps us from the silence so that we can move into it. By intentionally quieting our restless minds and calling a temporary halt to that random noise, the inner noise and the outer noise that we constantly encounter, we can create an environment where we can be in the silence and manifest from that silence. You know, there are many different methods to commune with the silence, but so many people prefer the comfort of noise. You know, the crowds, the constant engagement of new thoughts, of banter. Some people are actually afraid of the silence because in the silence, there's no option but to be yourself and to look at all those parts that we're not fond of. But to embrace the silence means removing the familiar and moving into uncharted territories. It's probably the most important exploration we'll ever do. I'd like to close with a quote from John Roger Barry in his book, The Deepest Silence. Ever elusive, yet all pervading. Silence is known by those who take the leap. The yearning heart echoes the cry that seized the psalmist. Be still and know that I am God. The knowing mystic seized with a searing non-dual vision confidently answers back. Be silent and know that you too our God. So I'm going to invite all of you right now to be silent and know that you too are God. So I invite you to get comfortable in your seats, to remove anything that may be on your lap, to put your feet flat on the floor or in a way that it's not obstructed and just allow yourselves to breathe. Feel your breath moving in and moving out. And you take in a deep breath. You let it out. And you feel yourself with every exhalation, you feel yourself getting more and more relaxed, more and more comfortable. You feel yourself letting go and the seat firmly supports your body. And as your breathing slows down, you feel yourself breathing at a comfortable pace for you. And now you bring your awareness to your heart center, that place of love, that place of community, that place of oneness. And you tune out all the external sounds and you quiet the sounds in your mind. And I invite you to move deeper and deeper into the silence. And should your mind wander, that's fine. Just bring your focus back to your breath and allow the thoughts to be like a movie, just moving past, moving past the screen of your mind. And I, as you move deeper and deeper into the silence, 
You just listen.
I am so grateful for the ability to move into the silence and so grateful for the time that I put aside for the silence. And now I bring to mind anyone who may be in need of prayer. Anyone in our life, including ourselves, we extend this to everyone on our prayer list everyone in our unity community and silent unity and to the wider circle of the world. We affirm that there is a power and a presence within each individual that will help them move through whatever temporary circumstances they are currently experiencing. We know the power within them is greater than anything that they may be experiencing, anything that they may be coming up against. And we pray for a swift, easy move through these conditions and the awareness that they are not alone and the universe supports them in all that they do. And now I invite you to bring your consciousness back into your body, back into the room where you are. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes. And I'd just like to let you all know that you were in the silence for five minutes. So if you think you can't meditate or if you can't stay in the silence for longer than a minute or two, you just achieved five minutes. <laughs> now, this is the time during our service where we have the opportunity to give. So I invite you to take your gifts in your hand or if you use a credit card or PayPal, just um, visualize those symbols. And I just wanna let you know a little thing that I do in the memo area of my check. And I've been doing this for years and years. I always put an affirmation. I learned this in one of the first prosperity classes that I took back in the nineties. I always write in God is source or God is abundance or um, my faith is in God. And it just supports my um, financial endeavors. It helps me make a statement to the universe that I know that God is source and supply. So I invite you again to take your gifts, hold them in your hands or visualize whatever symbol and just feel the love that you are radiating, moving forth from your heart. Just this energy field goes out everywhere and in includes and surrounds the gifts that you offer with this incredible level of love and the awareness, the awareness that God is our source and God consciousness is our supply. There is always more than enough and we are supported in all that we need. And I invite you to bless these gifts with me and with your mics muted Divine love as me blesses and multiplies all that I choose to give and all that I am open to receive. And I am grateful. And for anyone watching the live stream, we're so grateful that you joined us today. And if you'd like to join us on Zoom, feel free to email unity at unityspiritualcenter.org. And you can visit our website, unityspiritualcenter.org to listen to any of the past services that you missed. And if you'd like to share your uh, gifts with us, you can click on our donate button. So thank you. Thank you for being here with us today.